Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Sigma SP1000C 1000 watt power supply. What's included are cable ties, modular leads, screws for mounting the power supply in the case, a power cord, and the power supply. This line of power supplies are currently available in many different wattages ranging from 650 to 1000. I will be reviewing the 1000 watt model which is more than enough for high-end computer systems. Now how is this wattage determined? Well to understand that you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use and there are essentially two different rails the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. In this particular case the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 150 watts and the 12 volt is 840 watts which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fan, CPU, video cards, etc. Also some might be interested to know the peak amps on each rail. Well the plus 3.3 volt and the plus 5 volt rails are both 26 amps each. There are also four plus 12 volt rails and they are all 20 amps each with a combined power of 70 amps. Please note that a power supply with a single plus 12 volt rail is preferred in a multiple video card setup. There are a couple of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware that you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high end gaming rig will require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. For a hard core system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line, multiple video cards set up with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's around 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC, or Active Power Factor Correction, is something that also assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for a full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, 80 plus, NVIDIA SLI, and ATI Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. At present, this power supply doesn't meet any of these certifications. Certifications, though, can take a while, so this doesn't mean it won't be certified. It just means that at the time of this review, it was not certified. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. This ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply that uses low-grade capacitors. This power supply uses Japanese capacitors. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside the case. Let's have a closer look at this power supply. Considering most high wattage power supplies are very long, this one is surprisingly short. So compact, in fact, it will fit in all cases, including mid-tower, home theater PC, and small form factor cases. It has a gloss paint finish, and the housing is steel. They include a 120 millimeter blue LED fan and honeycomb ventilation. This ensures maximum cooling, so the power supply will remain cool in almost any environment. Here's the power cord connection and the power switch. The 24 pin and 8 pin are hardwired into the power supply and can't be removed. The remaining though are modular leads. While this power supply doesn't have all modular leads, the required ones are already attached. Modular leads are fantastic because you only need to use the ones necessary for your particular setup which reduces the cable mess inside the case and this also looks great but it increases the airflow as well. Finally, have a listen to the 120 millimeter fan.
This power supply performs fairly well. It's incredibly short and uses a reasonably quiet 120 mm blue LED fan. Now consider that this power supply doesn't have a lot of amps on the plus 12 volt rail. So I wouldn't recommend using this power supply in a top of the line video card multiple configuration because I don't believe it can handle load. But overall, it's a great product. Until next time, take care.